could be just a few years away from a global disaster. That's the warning coming from one of the world's leading ice experts, Professor Peter Wadhams of Cambridge University. In a statement to the Guardian newspaper, Wadhams warned, climate change is no longer something we can aim to do something about in a few decades time, and that we must not only urgency re urgently reduce CO2 emissions, but must urgently examine other ways of slowing global warming, such as the various geoengineering ideas that have been put forward. In other words, oil-funded scientists and politicians have pushed us past the tipping point, and now it's time to do or die. Joining me now to discuss what can be done to prevent the end of the world as we know it is Professor Peter Wadhams, professor of ocean physics and head of the Polar Ocean Physics Groups at, at Cambridge University. Professor, welcome to the program. Thank you. That, what would the total collapse of the Arctic ice sheet look like, and when might this occur? Well, we're only talking about summer. Uh, we're not talking about the whole year round. What we're seeing is that the summer ice, sea ice extent, which used to be uh, almost the, the, the whole Arctic Ocean still being ice covered in summer, has shrunk back dramatically. And we do expect that it, it will probably disappear completely within three or four years because uh, the, of the enormous amount of shrinkage that's occurred in the last uh, last recent years and the fact that it's going thinner all the time. So it's just not able to sustain uh, a year's growth and survive through the summer. Wouldn't, wouldn't that open up a lot, of, uh, a, a lot of the Arctic circumpolar peat and bog areas and that, that would start releasing methane and wouldn't that you know, start a, a, a cascade effect, rapidly accelerating global climate, climate change, global warming? Yes, this is one of the, the two big things we're worried about, the, the two uh, consequences of this retreat that will accelerate global warming. One is that just called the albedo feedback effect, the fact that you're replacing bright snow-covered surface that reflects most of the radiation falling on it by dark ocean, which absorbs nearly all of the radiation. That, that feedback effect um, is itself accelerating global warming. But the other effect is that as the sea ice retreats in the summer, uh, you're exposing uh, a huge area of ocean that used to be ice covered year round and that ocean warms up and satellite pictures show it reaching seven degrees in places and uh, at, when the water gets that warm over these shallow shelves uh, it melts the permafrost um, the subsea permafrost with which extends out from the Arctic coastlines out in, in under the ocean. And uh, as that permafrost melts, it releases methane. And at the moment, there's an expedition, a Russian-US joint expedition out there in the East Siberian Sea, which is seeing very big methane plumes being released. Yeah. What, what uh, we, we have uh, about a minute and a half here, sir. What can or should we do right now? Well, we have to to do something because these two factors are both accelerating global warming. So um, we, we can't continue to either just adapt to global warming or hope or plan to do something in the future. Um, we don't have time really we, where well, we should be reducing carbon emissions and in the long run we'll have to need to deal with this. But in the short term, um, it's not possible to, to change our way of life that quickly. So uh, we should be looking at ways that you can put a sticking plaster on this um, effect by technical methods that, that could uh, reduce the rate of warming. And that's things like uh, whitening clouds by pumping uh, water vapor into them, uh, releasing uh, powdered, uh, certain uh, powder into the upper atmosphere that can reflect some of the radiation. Measures like this are the measures that we should right. be just Ge trying to design. Geoengineering. We, we ought to be looking at it because yeah. uh, we don't have time to, to be able to reduce our CO2 right. fast enough. But Professor Peter Wadhams, thank you so much for staying up late tonight to be on our show. Thank you.